Hello, dear friends. Grandmaster Sengi Shipov is following the developments of the tournament that, are, that is happening on the windy coast of the Netherlands. The super tournament is very close to the finish line. We are awaiting the last three deciding rounds. Today's game could have been the battle of the leaders if both Morozevic and Carlsen were playing at their usual level. But, on the other hand, a couple of wins would still let Carlsen battle for the first place. I think that after the long-awaited win, after a long string of draws and a day off, he's starting the battle in a good mood. My prognosis, Morozevich Carlson, 0-1. Everything will decide the difference in motivation. The Nimsovich defense. The first to play this move on the high level was Alexander Alokhine. His idea was to force the trade on c3 without doubling up the pawns. The negative side of it is that white will get held up in development. The special intrigue in this game provides the fact that this is a meeting of world-famous variations experts. The sharpest of answers. Black is planning to open up the center as quickly as possible and start complications. Consistent play. The battle in the center is unavoidable and will lead to many losses. It's impossible to punish the daring knight with a move f3 here because of queen h4 check so d takes c5 only like that it's important to maximally bring the pieces into battle the hopeless continuation here in knight takes c5 c takes d5 queen takes d5 would have been argued by b4 and white wins a piece here we have a principally important moment to trade or not to trade the pawns on d5 the character of the later battle will depend on that decision. The most aggressive and the riskiest of developments. White is clearing up the way for the bishop at c8, but keeps the extra pawn. No good here is queen takes d5 due to bishop e3. So e takes d5. For now, white has only the queen developed. His disadvantage to black's development is becoming threatening. But for more modern chess players, mainline ideas and scary words don't play a big role. Everything in this is decided by concrete analysis. A very timely jump. Forced modesty. Black has time to win a pawn before white finished mobilizing. A small weakness in their position is the isolated pawn d5, but it can become a strength. A novelty, Sasha is correcting his own game. In the meeting during the first round, Morozevich Adams followed bishop c3. I like Morozevich's idea. He fixed everything in his camp. The capturing of the pawn on b2 is clearly no good for black because of the move of the white rook on b7. What was that? The move looks anti-positional. The square e4 and the pawn e3 are weakened, but how to use it? Mm, possibly there is no way. Besides the breakthrough f4, there's quite a, a concrete idea. Take away the square e5 from the black knight, through which he could have jumped to c4 in the case of b4. Well, my first reaction could have been too emotional. Besides, Sasha probably came up with this idea not on the board, but at home in analysis. So everything is very serious. By the way, the move 18 f4 is demonstrated in the first lines of Morris Avengers and not only his favorite chess program. So behind this, there's the invincible power of the computer metal. Carlson is playing in strong position in line. Puts all the pieces in the center, avoids weakening. Simple and humane. All correct, the black knight is limited from all sides. Magnus is taking his time thinking. He did all the obvious moves, now it's to time to come up with a clear plan of action. The step d4 is neutralized. Knowing the crazy character of the Moscow Grandmaster, it's possible to await the maneuver rook f3, rook h3, with white's pressure on the king's side. Oh, by the way, that's another plus of the mold move of the white pawn f4. What should black do? Black is ready for the move of the white rook to h3, and the window will be helpful for him too. A small, unpleasant answer. Sasha so shows that he didn't want to put the rook on h3. The white king has the cozy spot on h2. As usual, the plane slowed down at the end of the opening. Typical grandmaster play. Thinks for a long time, moves slowly. Doesn't change anything, waits for the activity of the opponent. The movement of the pawn a6 diffuses the push b5. 
White is returning to the strategy of pressure in the center. It's necessary to limit black with the defense of the pawn d5, cement the control under the square d4, and only after that look for objects of attack on the sides. An accurate counter blow. The position of the rook on c5 excludes the plan answer b5. That's why the pawn b4 becomes a moving target for black. At this time, I found a cup of completely cold tea on my table. The battle is so interesting that for the last hour and a half, I wasn't part of real life. It's getting dark in Moscow. The center of gravity shifted to the queen side. When all the sailors moved to the left side, the moon was going to tilt. Carlson is determined in his counterattack. The pawn b4 already got a hit stroke from all the attention to its modest personality. Magnus ignored the threat to the pawn d5 since he saw the counterattack on e3. I would like to ask you, dear friends, to stretch your minds and calculate the variations. See the white rook on c1? It's going to become a sacrifice at the end of the line. Looks like Morozevich is also busy working out the technique of the variation calculations. Can't decide for a while. It's possible to end up in St. Not like that. The indication and the author of what has happened. If the white king ended up on the square h2 a little earlier, black wouldn't have had tactical motives for attack. Here is the trade variation that could have happened. Rook takes d5, and so on. One more slight trick executed by the Norwegian magician. This time, the object, object of the claim became the bishop d2, which is x all the way to the rook d8. But what else would you come up with if everything lies to black's advantage? So the pawn c4 can't be taken for now because of the loss of the mission. Surprising but fact, Sasha is really avoiding simplifications. He has nothing to lose. Though, now the black king will be very strong. With its support, black's passed pawn could pass the squares b4 and b2. For now, those are only dreams, but grandmasters have a habit of dreaming about the faraway future. Understanding the danger, Morozevich is hurrying to turn the game into the drawing path. The time is as follows. Morozevich has 19 minutes remaining. Carlson has 49. Await the decision. The last attempt to take control of the situation. The counterattack brings white the save. The question is only about whether who will declare the perpetual check to who. With that same idea, to distract the black queen from the square e8. The time for the pyrotechnic effect bishop takes h6 hasn't come yet. And now it's time. Said, done. Now black will have to resort to the perpetual check of the white king. For the entertainment purposes of the respected audience, we should also sacrifice the knight. Exactly, Magnus. Good job. Draw. An interesting game. Personally, I was intrigued by it of the paradox feeling about the move number 18, f4. Looks like it was a good one, and White had chances to get an advantage. But Morozevich missed the opponent's counterattack, and already later had to look for safer ways. The result is natural. For you again, dear friends, word Grandmaster Sergei Shipov. Until the next round, have a good day, and thank you for your attention.